Hello. Uh, welcome to a session on assessment hearing and the disclosure in the hearing. This is part three of a four-part session. My name is John Allen. I'm the city assessor for the City of Medicine Hat. A little bit about my background. I've spent about nine years as a small business owner before getting into real estate. Took my licensing course in 1981, the agent's course in 1985. Then I uh, took the Urban Land Economics program, completing the four-year diploma with the appraisal option in 1993. I'm a professional member of the Real Estate Institute of BC. In my previous life, I've been an investor owner of a couple of commercial buildings, rental house, mobile home park, duplex, sixplex. I've built uh, a couple of additions, uh, lots of renovations, a couple of complete buildings. I've been a realtor, uh, agency owner, uh, property manager, court re appointed uh, receiver of rents, managed 220 rentals, uh, several strata complexes, and an 80,000 square foot uh, commercial flex building. I joined BC Assessment in 1990. With my background, I was immediately involved in commercial assessment work and appeals. I have been involved in all levels of appeals and valuation of most types of property. I've worked in Alberta, Saskatchewan, and BC. 2005, I answered a call from Saskatchewan Assessment Management Agency, commonly known as SAMA. This resulted in my moving to Saskatchewan to lead the Provincial Revaluation Unit, which included the introduction of the income approach in SAMA jurisdictions for the 2009 role. I came to Medicine Hat in October of 2011 as a city assessor. Uh, this, this presentation is intended to assist the property owner when determining what has to be disclosed and when. It is intended to supplement independent professional advice, not to replace it. I will provide some perspective on the informal and the formal process of disclosure, partly as a former realtor, partly as a former commercial property owner, and mostly as an assessor. Not an all-encompassing step-by-step how-to manual. I will try to present some lessons learned over the past 33 years in the real estate and assessment professions. All parties are required to disclose their evidence in advance. Failure to disclose can result in evidence not being allowed or an outright dismissal of the complaint. Disclosure is required so that all parties know the case that is being presented and proper disclosure allows a party to respond to those issues. Information that was requested, matters under complaint, evidence disclosure timelines, legal precedents, verbal evidence. I'll go through all these points. So disclosure of requested information. Owners can request property information under the Municipal Government Act, Section 299 or 300. If a party doesn't receive information requested, there's a separate compliance complaint form and process that can be filed through Municipal Affairs. A compliance request does not affect an assessment complaint timeline, which means you cannot hold up your disclosure or appeal documents if you did not receive something that was requested. Some information cannot be requested. Some is uh, confidential or available online. So information that is provided on a website is considered as an alternative to providing individual responses. Typically, if information is not supplied under a 299 or a 300 request, it cannot be introduced later in a disclosure document. The assessor can request information under the Municipal Government Act Section 295. If information is not provided within the required time frames, there are consequences. In the case of a 295 request, if the information was not returned within 60 days, the owner cannot file an assessment complaint in the following year. You could have situations where a partial uh, return was submitted, so it may go to a hearing, but then information that was omitted or withheld that would not be allowed to be introduced in the hearing. Disclosure dates. So the roll was declared March 20th. If you, if you went through the previous two sessions, you'd, you'd know these dates. Uh, assessment notices were mailed March 28th. Inquired period then uh, finishes on June 4th, and that's the filing deadline. After a hearing date is set by the, the clerk of the Assessment Review Board, uh, parties have to 
submit their disclosure uh, documents in these timelines. So the local board, which is a residential unit up to three units, has to be 21 days before the hearing for the complainant. Then the respondent, uh, usually the assessor, has seven days before the hearing. The complainant then can rebut the respondent's document three days before the hearing. Composite board is for commercial properties or residential over three units and a little longer time frame, 42 days for the complainant, uh, respondent 14 days, and the complainant has seven days to respond uh, and rebuttal for the, the assessor's document. So there are mailing and delivery rules and this is important. So the dates are enforced. If you're one day late, as there was some uh, last year, uh, the disclosure can't be entered, can't be discussed in any way. So this can be fatal to a case. Dates are interpreted by the Interpretation Act. So delivering a document 42 days prior to the hearing does not mean just counting 43 days back and then mailing or dropping it off on the 43rd day. The example is the Interpretation Act says you have to read the words of the Act and it's recommended that you obtain legal advice. Okay. As an assessor, we, can, we have to count the days between the events. So you exclude the hearing day and the delivery day. And then if you're mailing to someone in Alberta, you need to add an additional seven days. Again, you need to have legal advice if you're going to interpret these mailing days. Assessors request someone sign for a disclosure package so that delivery is confirmed. So matters under complaint or issues. Okay, every piece of evidence that is intended to support the issue that's been raised on your complaint form in Section 5 is required to be disclosed in compliance with the regulations. You can't uh, put some information in and then go into the hearing and try to introduce new evidence. can't be introduced at a hearing. If it is, it can be objected to uh, both sides and then the board is legislated to not consider any evidence about a matter that was not properly disclosed. You cannot raise a new issue at the hearing as issues are required to be disclosed on the filed complaint form. This allows parties to consider the issue and respond to the issue. So the clerk's office, uh, it's important that everyone understand that they just receive the documents and they'll date stamp them. They hold the documents until the hearing. The clerk does not read your complaint form and validate it in any way. Okay? Uh, the delivery of the documents is the responsibility of the delivering party. Okay? The clerk's office is a scheduler of the hearing on behalf of the review board. The clerk's office ensures that an agent form is filed and the complaint fee is received but they don't pass judgment on the validity or the content of a, a complaint. The hearing procedure. The board uh, controls their hearings. So they open the hearing, they explain the procedures that, will, that it will follow. Commencement of the hearing, the complainant introduces their disclosure to the board and the board will formally enter the document into the record. The board then requests that the complainant present the evidence how you present it or proceed is up to you. Okay, you basically take the board through your disclosure document. The board typically does not know the property, so it's incumbent upon the complainant to present all the evidence that will support the issues under complaint. Again, all of this information has to be in the disclosure already. Questions typically, typically will be asked by the, uh, of the presenter. The assessor will ask questions, as will the board. Some of the questions that you would uh, possibly receive about the disclosure. Clarification of evidence versus opinion. Clarification of calculations if the details are not shown. Uh, logical progression through the evidence will assist the board. There may be questions when a presenter has lost the board by moving back and forth uh, around in the document. Third party documents will be questioned. So the third party should be available uh, to answer questions. A typical example would be a short form appraisal. Uh, appraisers are required to maintain a backup file 
that contains calculations and support data. If the appraiser is not present to answer questions, uh, it's difficult for the board and less weight may be given to the document. Uh, more hearing questions. Uh, what is the matter under complaint? So you have to refer back to section 5 of the complaint form. What evidence can be presented to support an argument? So evidence must be in the disclosure document. Uh, what is evidence? Well, market data from the valuation period prior to July 1st. When does evidence get presented? Uh, it gets presented in the disclosure date, uh, by the disclosure date uh, to the other party. Then in the hearing, it gets in turn presented to the board. And who decides what evidence is? The board determines what evidence it will hear. There are some rules for them. Uh, disclosures must be received by the exchange date. And new evidence, while it's not allowed to be introduced at the hearing, there are some limited exceptions. Legal precedents. Uh, the board determines what evidence it will accept, what weight to give to the evidence. A decision from a similar board may not be seen as a precedent. Decisions from the Court of Queen's Bench may, if the board accepts that the facts are the same. The board may adjourn at any time to consider an issue. Uh, and they may withhold their decision until they uh, do the formal decision, complete decision. Well, verbal evidence is still considered evidence, so new evidence is not allowed. The testimony is typically confined to the presentation of the disclosed document uh, and argument. So decisions are all available on the municipal board site for previous uh, hearings. They're searchable by a multitude of, uh, uh, multitude of ways. There's a jurisdiction, you can search by year, keyword, uh, person's name, you know, any, any sort of issue. Decisions are required, uh, the board is required to complete their decision within 30 days and then mail it. Decisions have to contain a summary of the case, the outcome, the reasons for the decision. A copy of the hearing tape uh, can be obtained from the city clerk. If you require a transcript, if you're going to go forward with a, an appeal on a point of law to the Court of Queen's Bench, you have to have a transcript done. Okay, And those decisions uh, of the CARB or the boards can be appealed on a point of law to the Court of Queen's Bench within 30 days. If you have any uh, further questions uh, or things that I haven't answered, you can send the questions through to the Chamber of Commerce or to the City Assessor, and I'll get back to them uh, as time allows. Thank you.